Welcome to August Leco Challenge. Today's problem is minimum cost for tickets. In a country popular for train travel, you have planned some train traveling one year in advance. The days of the year you will travel is given as an array. Each day is an integer 1 to 365. All right, so that's simple enough. Now we have three train tickets sold in three different ways. A one day pass is sold for cost zero, seven day pass costs one, and 30 day pass for cost two. Now, we want to minimize the total cost for our days of consecutive travel. So in other words, if we're given a list of days like this, 1, 4, 6, 7, 8, 20, we know that the minimum cost is going to be 11 because we want to get the 7-day pass for 1 through 7 and then just get 1-day passes for 8 and 20. And that's going to equal 11. Now, immediately when I saw this problem, I knew that it was a dynamic programming solution because you can already see that we could probably solve it recursively in a brute force manner, just checking through every single day um, and every cost option that we have and trying to get to the very end, seeing what the minimum cost is going to be. Uh, we'd have to pass in the days that it would be good until, um, but that obviously that's going to create a lot of different combinations, which uh, gets expensive. So. What if we had some sort of dynamic programming structure to help with this? Uh, so say that we had our list of days here. And we had like, for instance, an array. And we could say, uh, how about what's going what's to cost for a one day pass, seven day pass, and for a 30 day pass. Each day we can kind of check to see how much we're at. Uh, so at seven days, we know that we could either um, whatever the cost of this is, I think it was 2715, so here it'd be two. Here with the seven day pass, it'd be seven, and here it'd be 15. Uh, so obviously the two is the minimum number. Uh, now moving forward, we can say, well, we have four days. Uh, this would be six, this would be eight, you know, 10, 12. Well, we already know that, that's uh, fairly straightforward. But the trick here is, uh, once we get to the point at which we see that we could have bought a seven day pass, we want to check at seven days what was a cost that we could have paid instead. So instead of eight, we see that seven days prior we could have picked seven days, right? So at that point, if we're having some sort of like this is the minimum cost here, then we could say, all right, here it's two, four, six. Here we know that. Well, actually, we could have paid 7. We could have paid 15 as well, but 7 is smaller than 8, so we pick 7. So that's kind of the idea. Now, if we used an, like a matrix, every time we calculate the minimum cost, what we'd have to do is um, go back the number of days, looking at the array values up here to check, okay, which day is going to be our the last one that we could have paid for. And that doesn't really work because... You can imagine that it's no longer going to be O of n. We have to like calculate that each time. And so that starts to become really expensive again. So that's not going to work. So this really um, confused me for a while. Like, what could we do exactly? And finally, I saw that instead of using like a matrix, what if we used a Q for these two structures? Like we had a Q instead. Then we could pop off the numbers that uh, as soon as we've exceeded the number of days that we could use it for. So for seven here, um, once we get to this point, and when we check to see what's the uh, minimum cost we could have paid instead, what, what were all our alternatives, we could pick the very first one. And once we pass that date, we go to like eight days, then we pop that off. We say, well, we can no longer use that. So now we have to use whatever's here. Um, and this queue needs to get built up every single time we calculate our minimum cost. So here it'd be like 9, uh, 9, 11, and so on and so forth. And every time we like find that the number of days have exceeded, we just pop that off. We say, nope, can't do that anymore. Uh, when we get to 20, we pop this off. And that's going to be what allows us to use our DP structure, which is going to be a Q. So hopefully, as I start coding this out, it'll start making more sense. Let's start with initializing two data structures, and they're just both going to be queues. Empty queues for now, one for the seven days and one for the 30 days. 
will also initialize the total cost, mem cost. All right, so now for all the days in days, what do we want to do? Well, first we want to pop off everything that uh, we can no longer use from our DP arrays, right? So while there's anything inside the DB7 and these queues, we'll make them a tuple. What we'll store here is the, the day as well as the total cost so far. Okay, so while DP7 and uh, DP7, the very first one and the very first object, the day is uh, uh, greater or greater? I guess less than or equal to the current day, we'll pop it off, pop left. And we'll do the same thing for the 30 days. Now, uh, we have to make sure that this one's going to be 7, so this will be plus 7, and this will be plus 30, right? Well, I'm sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting just confused. It's minus 7 and minus 30. And we'll pop those off. So let me see, we can do that in a one-liner in Python, so that's good. All right, now we want to append to our DP7. And we want to append what? Uh, well, whatever cost, well, no, not the cost, it's just the current day, as well as the cost that we calculated so far, which is going to be calculated here, plus the cost of, well, the cost of a seven day ticket. So that's going to be the second one inside of our, inside of our cost list. Same thing with 30. We'll Add cost plus cost with the cost of the 30 day ticket. All right, now we need to calculate our cost. So get the minimum of either whatever cost today with the cost of a one day pass or the very first, the very first um, tuple on our queue. And we will bring in the what? the second object, so that's the cost, as well as this right here. Oops, that's the same, the 30 day pass. So whatever the minimum is between these three, that should be the minimum cost. So it's kind of like a greedy method. We're going by each day and calculating what's the minimum, kind of storing the past information. And once we do that, we can just return the cost. All right, so let's make sure this worked. I may have made a mistake. Uh -huh, DP out of range. Okay, that's just a silly typo there. Hmm, okay, so DP thir Yeah, so this is one of the problems with copy pasting, you kind of lose track of that kind of thing. All right, so 1111 looks like it's working. Let's go and submit that. And there we go. So what is the time complexity on this? Well, uh, you can see it's O of N. Sure, we do these little popping things. So technically there's gonna be an, an additional um, a, a amount for the, the days, uh, but in overall it's O of N. Um, and space complexity I think is actually O of <clears throat> and times length of cost, so three. So <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I think time space complexity is also O of n. I'm, I'm not entirely sure about that though. Okay, so that's it. I mean, I know I s explained it very quickly, and it seems fairly simple, but this is not an easy problem. This uh, took me some time to figure it out, and uh, once I realized that. Instead of using a matrix, we should go ahead and use something like a queue. That made it a lot more easier to, to get this down. So, so that's it. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.